Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see Canadifieds of 11th February 2024. So here we are going to take PDF of our Hindu and we are going to highlight the articles. And one more thing here is actually we stopped current affairs from 3rd February, okay, like 4 days or 3 days I think so. So after that we are not getting views. Okay, so now onwards I want to make you a promise that so you are not going to stop current affairs analysis at any cost. So many students who are following our current affairs uh, like from last 2 years or 3 years, so they might be knowing that what is about my commitment and what is about my consistency, right? But because of uh, invariable reasons, okay, so that I can't stop them. Like tonsor is very important for, for my kids. So for that reason only, I accepted with my family members to go to Tirupati. So or else, yes, I won't be stopping this current affairs analysis. So keep this in, this in mind and we are not going to stop this current affairs analysis at any cost, even a single day also. So come back and watch this analysis okay and even i requesting you the students who are watching this current affairs analysis to share this video to your friends also because this type of analysis that you can't see anywhere because we are providing both from prelims and mains point of view and if you want to gain good marks in your mains then you have to follow this approach of thinking in different dimensions you have to write your answers in a multi-dimensional way so for that, this type of analysis is very important. So this is not going to teach you anywhere. Okay. So try to focus. Clear and try to come back and try to watch this analysis for sure. And today is Sunday. And many students, they have resistance today because, yeah, today is Sunday. So there is no need of reading newspaper. No, it is not correct. Because, yes, in Sunday's newspaper, they will be covering current affairs from environment and ecology and as well science and technology point of view and from these two areas like your environment and ecology science and technology you will be getting bulk of questions from current affairs that questions you can cover from this sunday's newspaper so come out of that inertia and start reading this sunday's newspaper also clear yeah this is front page of your hindu and luckily there is no important article from our examination point of view from this front page okay yes now let us move on to next page so even the city page also i found nothing much relevant you can directly move on to the states page And today I found like very, very less articles which are important from our examination point of view. So we are going to complete this analysis within 40 minutes. Okay, don't waste much time because prelims is very near and focus on CSAT students. Yes, here you can see one article. Title says NIA rates 15 places in JEI terror funding case in Jammu and Kashmir. So, JIA is nothing but jammat e islami So, what are the dimensions that you have to see? So, here there are three important words which are given here. The first one is NIA. Okay, first one is NIA. And second one is terror funding. And third one is J. E I. Yes or no? So I will show you. First one is NIA, second one is terror funding, and third one is JEI. So these are three important things. So what does this NIA means? It is National Investigation Agency. NIA is nothing but National Investigating Agency. So, what are the dimensions that you have to see? So, what is this agency? What are the functions? What are the functions and mandate? What are the functions and 
mandate of this national investigating agency or investigation agency and next one is you have to see under which ministry it comes under and one more thing you have to focus is whether this national investigation agency or investigating agency is a constitutional body or a statutory body or executory body so these three things whether you have to know so as of this body it is a statutory body so you have to know about what is the difference between this constitutional body and statutory body and executory body so constitutionary body means nothing but so we have law of land that is constitution of india right so if there is any article in our constitution talks about it for example we have article 324 talks about election commission but there is no article in our constitution which talks about this national investigation agency <clears throat> okay so it is one act which talks about this national investigation agency so whenever any act or any law leads to the formation of that so and so organization then that is called as statutory body so executory body is nothing but president or the government can come up with resolution to form that body that is called as executory body so these are the three bodies that you have to know and you have to know the second dimension it is about terror funding or terror financing Terror funding is also called as terror financing. So here you have to see some dimensions. So what is terror financing or terror funding? So here two things are involved here. Okay. State funding or state funded terror financing. And next one is non-state. For example, if you see in case of Pakistan, so terrorists, they are funded by the government itself. That is called as state funding. Okay, state funding, terror financing. Okay, here there are non-state actors will also involved in terror financing. That is called as this non-state actor or non-state terror financing. So, you have to see what is the impact. And you have to see like why this organization, you are funding this terror organization. So what is the motto? Okay, so in all these things that you have to remember. <clears throat> and one more thing here is there is terror word, right? So you have to know some terror outfits. For example, Al-Qaeda. You have to know about uh, Houthis, Hezbollah. JEM, Jaishem Mohammed, etc. JEI, etc. That you have to know from which country they are operating even. Okay, so this is second dimension. And third one is JEI. You have to see full form. <coughs> and where it is operating. And what is the motto. That's it. So these are the very important dimensions that you have to remember regarding this topic and we are going to see this. Okay, let us open our notes. So this is the notes that we are providing. So if you want to get these notes, you can join the Telegram channel. Link is given in the description box. Okay, so this article is important from your GS paper 3 under security. So this is the first subject that we can interlink with and the second one is under GS paper 2 we have constitutional and non-constitutional bodies. So there we can connect with this polity okay and from society point of view which comes in a GS paper one, we can connect this topic like what is the impact on society. Okay. So in all these subjects point of view, we can connect this topic. Clear. Now let us see the context. 
So here Nash Investigation Agency or Nash, Nash Investigating Agency conducted raids in 15 locations. In which area? In Jammu and Kashmir. As part of its crackdown on proscribed Jamaat e Islami in terror funding case. So there is one terror funding case of this JEI. So in that case, as a part of the investigation of that case, NIA now came up with investigation. Conducting of investigation in Jammu and Kashmir in 15 locations. And in this raid, they came up with seizure of incriminating documents. They got some documents and they got some digital devices which are connected to the activities of JEI and also related trust and they got about the property of around 20 lakh rupees okay so this is about the details <clears throat> and now let us move on to some facts so here we have to see the facts regarding nia and there's a high chance of getting question in your prelims regarding nia because many a times in newspaper you will be coming across this word called as nia so NIA, it is Central Counter Terrorism Law. Okay, NIA is Central Counter Terrorism Law Enforcement Agency. So it is Central Government's Counter Terrorism Law Enforcement Agency. And what is its mandate? Its mandate it is to investigate all offenses. So these offenses which are affecting sovereignty, security, and integrity of our country. So, which are the activities? So, which are related to any friendly relations with foreign states or if there is any action which happened against atomic and nuclear facilities which are present in our country and if there is any smuggling of arms, smuggling of drugs, fake Indian currency and infiltration across the borders. So, all these issues will be dealt by this NIA. And next one is, so this offenses under statutory laws which are enacted to implement international treaties and even we are having lots and lots of international treaties because we will be having bilateral relations, we will be having meetings, we will be having international conferences, conventions, etc. Right? So in all those we will be having some types of international treaties and we will be having agreements with other countries and we will be having conventions and resolutions of United Nations and even its agencies and other international organizations. So all these things, yes, we will be having this NIA, so it is Counter Terrorism Law Enforcement Agency in our country. And next one here is, so it was constituted under National Investigation Agency Act. So government came up with this act in year 2008. So after that we came with establishment of NIA. Because of this we call it as statutory body. It is not a constitutional body, it is a statutory body. So like human rights, okay, like National, National Human Rights Commission, States Human Rights Commission, this NIA is also a statutory body. So the agency is empowered to deal with investigation of terror related crimes across the states without special permission from the states under written proclamation from Ministry of Home Affairs. Okay, so it comes under the Ministry of Home Affairs. So where are the headquarters? Headquarters in New Delhi. So what is the jurisdiction of this NIA? So the law under which the agency operates extended to whole of India and also even the jurisdiction of this NIA which is extended to Indians who are present outside our country. And even persons in the service of government wherever they are posted and even persons on ships and aircrafts registered in India wherever they may be and persons who commit a scheduled offence beyond India against Indian citizens or affecting the interest of India. So all this will come under jurisdiction of NIA. Okay. So this is about this article. Okay. I hope it is clear, right? Yeah. And now let us see next topic. So this is again state speech. So here you can see one interesting image. So you can see the kites of different uh, motifs uh, like a tiger is there, like Spider-Man, etc. So it is nothing but international kite festival. Okay, variety of kites, they are on display as two-day international kite festival kicked off 
at Tarani Bavi Beach in Mangalore in Karnataka on Saturday. So here you have to see what is International Kite Festival. So you are going to be the future bureaucrats, right? Yes or no? Say me with confidence. Yes or no? So how many of you want to become the future bureaucrats? So please let me know your comments in the comment box with 100% confidence. Yes, I'm going to become IAS officer. I'm going to become IPS officer or I'm going to become IFS officer or I'm going to become IRS officer. So please let me know in the comment box with full josh and 100% confidence. First of all, believe in yourself. So the first step to start preparation is believe, believe in yourself like I can crack it. I can crack it. Then start the preparation. Okay. Yes. So you are going to the future bureaucrats and you have to play a major role uh, by uh, like in conducting of this events. So I was very much uh, interested. Actually, I remembered one of this event of International Kite Festival, especially in Telangana state uh, when Amripali uh, was a district collector in Varangal's uh, district. So she conducted this International Kite Festival uh, event two days and I visited that okay so that I felt very very happy okay and I want to share this experience because you are going to be the future bureaucrats and you have to lead that type of events okay you need to have a special planning for that. So yes if you are not the person of uh, event manager okay. So try to incorporate some things like how can you manage the events from now onwards. Yes, now let us move on. In this news page, you can see one small keyword. That is CAA will be implemented before LS election uh, says Shah. So here you have to focus on CAA. So CAA stands for Citizenship Amendment Act. So I will be zooming it so that you can have a good look over it okay I hope you can see now right okay so here it this article is talking about CA that is citizenship amendment act so here our union home minister he is saying that citizenship amendment act will be issued before the coming Lok Sabha election okay and the process to grant Indian nationality to beneficiaries will start soon Okay, so this is the thing which mainly said by our Union Home Minister. So here if you see next paragraph says that under this CAA that is Citizenship Amendment Act. So this act which wants to grant Indian nationality to persecuted non-Muslim minorities. Okay, so for example, they came from Bangladesh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. So like uh, Buddhist, Jains, okay, Parsis. So they are not including Muslims. Okay, so they are not including Muslims, but non-Muslim migrants from Bangladesh, Pakistan and Afghanistan, they are going to get Indian nationality. So here in this context, you have to know some dimensions. So you have to know what is the CAA. Okay, so what are the provisions of this CAA? So which are those six non-Muslim migrants? from Pakistan, Afghanistan, so they are going to get Indian nationality and you have to know about citizenship so you will be reading this chapter right in Lakshmikant you have to know like in how many ways we can get citizenship in how many ways we can get citizenship and in how many ways you can lose citizenship so this is very very important from your prelims point of view. So no need of remembering the dates. So in the citizenship chapter you will be having lots and lots of dates but there is no need of remembering dates but just remember the concepts. Like in how many ways we can acquire Indian citizenship and how many ways we can lose this Indian citizenship. Okay. Let me zoom in. Yeah. And now let us move on to the next page. So there is nothing much important in this news page. Yeah, here you can see one important article. That is heritage spaces in Lucknow not being maintained properly. So here the important key word is heritage sites. Okay, 
so actually if you're talking about this article it is saying that so whatever the heritage sites are present in this Lucknow that is in UP region so they are not maintaining properly so here you have to see some dimensions okay so the problem here is heritage sites mismanagement so the problem here is heritage sites mismanagement right so you have to understand what is this heritage site means so how can we define this heritage sites and you have to see in india total heritage sites total heritage sites in india and which state is having highest and which state is having highest number of heritage sites so in this heritage sites we have two types tangible and intangible we have two types tangible and intangible and even mixed so i will tell you an example of mixed site that is kanchan ganga national park Okay, and you have to see which state is having highest number and which state is having the lowest number. And here this article is especially talking about the problems, right? Let us find out the problems. Problem here is lack of maintenance. So, we are not maintaining properly. Okay, maintenance. And next one is there is no proper sanitation. And one more brick problem here is encroachments. Okay, encroachment problem. So please can you tell me some problem? Have you visited any heritage site so far? So if you have visited, so please let me know which is that site and what are the problems that you identified there. Okay, rather than reading in the newspaper or reading in any book. So if you have visited that place and if you identify the what is happening around you, then you can easily get more points. Okay, try to sit and try to imagine one world heritage site. Okay, and think that what are the problems that you are facing there. Okay, so in this way you can cover this problem. And you are going to the future bureaucrats, right? So you have to see like what is your role. So what are the measures that you can take to improve? the management in this heritage sites so all these are very very important dimensions that you have to see and this topic is important from your gs paper one under art and culture okay it is very very important and now let us see next topic it is about csir nal that is national aerospace laboratories flies test drone that can double up as pseudo satellite so here you can see it is it is test drone it is nothing but unmanned aerial vehicle and has been developed by nash uh, by nal that is national aerospace laboratories of csir and here we have to so what are the applications of this drone and what are the specialties actually so you know that uh, i will tell you small concept so let us take this as a drone like this okay so this is as a drone so drone can be fly okay so it is in atmosphere now so so and so person who is operating this drone by using some remote control all right so the specialty of this drone here is it can fly in stratosphere So where is the stratosphere is located? For example, let us take this as earth surface. This is earth and this is surface of earth. Around this we have atmosphere. Atmosphere is nothing but the layer of air which is surrounding our earth. So in that atmosphere we have different layers. So first layer is troposphere. First layer is trophosphere, 
एंड सेकेंड लेयर इज स्ट्रेटोस्फियर नेक्स्ट वी हैव मीसोस्फियर थर्मोस्फियर आइनोस्फियर एक्सेट्रा राइट सो नाउ नॉर्मली द ड्रोन्स दे कैन फ्लाई इन द स्टोपोस्फियर सो इन ट्रोपोस्फियर वी हैव क्लाउड्स बट इन स्टेटोस्फियर सो वी कैन फ्लाई एरोप्लेन्स एरोप्लेन्स विल बी फ्लाइड इन द स्टेटोस्फियर एंड द स्पेशल ऑफ दिस ड्रोन इज इट कैन बी फ्लाइड इन द स्टेटोस्फियर ओके सो नाउ लेट एस सी द डायमेंशंस So it is talking about drone. Drone is nothing but unmanned aerial vehicle. Drone is nothing but unmanned drone is nothing but unmanned aerial vehicle. And you have to see like different types of drones. types based on their size large medium small nano like that and you have to see what are the applications of this drone and you have to see about dgca role director general of civil aviation role in managing this drones and we will be having no fly zones of this drones so which are this no fly zones so where can we see this no fly zones that is very very important okay application part is also very very important so these are some important dimensions that you have to see from this drone topic right and now let us see the notes of this topic and this topic is very important from different dimensions like we are talking about gs paper 3 science and technology here because this drone can be used as a pseudo satellite it is having new lots and lots of applications and we are also talking about this drones and application it is also very important from security because nowadays you might be knowing about the issue between israel and palestinian and especially merchant vessels or ships which are going through this red sea so the ships which are going through this red sea they are attacked by using this drones by this houthis of yemen right and from this we have to connect this with international relations and as well as security point of view so in this way we can connect gs paper 3 gs paper 2 from international relations security point of view science and technology point of view clear regarding the dimensions so if you are getting like how to read the newspaper and if you are getting some ideas so please do hit the like button don't forget to hit the like button so please don't leave this session without hitting the like button it is only one request from my side so it will be not taking more than 2 seconds of time but for this analysis i am i am getting up early morning okay in the morning so even though here my kids will be uh, getting up like around 4 4:30 in the morning so even though i am not uh, taking care of them i have to come up with this analysis at any cost for the sake of my students so at least think about that and realize about that and hit the like button and please do share this video to your friends also okay so that is only one request from my side and my promise is we are not going to stop analysis even a single day from now onwards clear so if you like this commitment hit the like button and share this video Yeah. So now let us see the next topic. It is about CSIR NAL flies test drone that can double up as pseudo satellite. Pseudo means nothing but false. Satellite is nothing but the object which is revolving around the planet. Yes or no? So it is a natural satellite of uh, in Earth. Please tell me now. It is a natural satellite of Earth. In the comment box. Yeah. Now let us see the context. It says that scientists at CSIR, NAL, that is National Aerospace Laboratories, they successfully tested unmanned aerial vehicle, and it is called as high altitude pseudo satellite. That is HAPS. It is very important. 
high altitude pseudo satellite pseudo is nothing but false satellite is nothing but the object which is revolving around the planets so this hips they are like drones drone is nothing but unmanned aerial vehicle except that they are expected to be in the stratosphere okay they are expected to be in the stratosphere okay so where the normally the planes they will fly planes and jets they will fly and these are getting energy because they are having fixed with solar cells and a battery system to be able to hover for the days so this is the image of that so and so unmanned aerial vehicle it is looking like a plane but it is not a plane okay so if you see some features so it is unmanned aerial vehicle that is uav and it is designed for extended periods of operation at high altitudes and especially it can reach altitudes of 18 to 20 kilometers nearly double that of commercial aeroplanes or airplanes and it is solar powered and it can remain in the air for months because it is fixed with the battery system it can store the energy and even years also for months even years offering advantages which is similar to that of satellite so because of this we are calling it as pseudo satellite and it is operating cost is significantly very low compared to that of a satellite so if we want to launch a satellite we have to take the rocket and we have to launch the rocket and we have to place in the orbit but it is not like that okay and what is significance of this pseudo satellite it is still developing in it is in still developing technology so india's recent successful test flight places it's among a select group of countries like already the countries like china south korea uk they are already developing this technology and india will be also joining this group soon and it can significantly increase india's surveillance and india's monitoring capabilities in the broader areas and even it will be helpful for identifying the natural calamities and it can also deploy mobile communication networks in the remote areas so these are the very important applications of the satellite or pseudo satellite okay so this is very very important and now let us see the next topic so in the world page i found nothing much is relevant okay there is one article here that we have to see is about pm to inaugurate hindu temple in uae next week so here you have to see uae and you have to see which is that hindu temple as well this hindu temple is the largest temple and it is present around in 27 acres so this land is had been donated by this uae government so if you see the context here our prime minister he is going to visit uae soon in the next week so in his visit so one important agenda of his visit it is to inaugurate this hindu temple okay where it is located in abu dhabi so this is the temple that you can see like uh, this is a temple complex and this is the area which is present around the temple and normally if you see these are shikaras and these are the domes domes or spherical structure there are two domes and here you can see like these are the uh, spires okay so there are seven spires which are present and now let us see some facts regarding this temple structure so this temple is being built by bapas swami narayan sansta so about 27 acres of area that is given by this uae government okay so to construct this temple and this temple having the good features they will be having exclusive very good marble carvings so especially they use a stand stone pink stand stone from rajasthan okay and especially skilled artisans from this rajasthan gujarat they are doing the art work there and a substantial number of pink sand stone were transported from northern rajasthan to this abu dhabi for the construction of this temple and this architecture elements which includes domes there are two domes and seven shikaras or they are called as spires and these seven shikars they symbolizes seven uaes emirates and there are two well some runs dome like structures and there are about 402 pillars they used for the building of this temple so with each shikar we have intrinsicate carvings so these carvings they depict the stories of ramayana stories of shiva purana bhagavatam and aslas mahabharata etc 
and especially there are very good narratives of Lord Jagannath, Lord Swami Narayan, Lord Venkateshwara and Lord Ayappa. So I will show you the image how the carvings are. So it was like early morning during 5.30 am uh, that I saw this image and I felt that oh my god yeah that much good they were like so you can see how beautifully and how beautifully they had been carved on the on this walls of the temple so it is very very uh, difficult right it is also very very neat and clean and you can see these are the images they are depicting this ramayana events and as well as mahabharata and shiva purana okay etc so this is very very well and if you see like this you can see the rajasthani type of architecture here right so because in Rajasthani type of architecture, you can see the use of this pink sandstone and here in this temple also they use pink sandstone and this architecture it is like same. So one important uh, uh, feature of this Rajasthani architecture here is if you have uh, seen this uh, um, pink city like Jaipur, so we have lots and lots of forts. So they have the important feature like hanging windows. Okay, so in the same way, if you see this architecture, you can remember that Rajasthani architecture. Yes or no? Yes, now let us move back to the science page. So this page is very important and there is very, very important articles that appear in this science page. So you can see this is science page, right? Yeah, you can see in the snapshots, you can see small, small articles, but they are very important. So here you can see like pollinator plant interactions disrupted by nitrate radicals. So pollination is very important. Okay, po without pollination there will be no fertilization. Yes or no? If there is no fertilization, there is no fruits. Yeah, I will tell you the concepts. So because I am from biology background, okay. Yeah, I am from science background, not biology. Yes, science background. So what is the meaning of pollination? So, do you know about the meaning of pollination? So, pollen grains, they will be moving from anther to stigma. So, don't ask me what is this pollen grain. So, in the flower, so if you, uh, if you touch a flower, so this will be the colorful part and this will be the stigma and you can see these are stamens. So, in this stamens, if you touch them, you can see like white or a light yellow color powdery thing. So that is called as pollen grains. So that is called as pollen grains. So these pollen grains, they will be moving from the stamens to stigma. So this process is called as pollination. Okay. So anther is a male reproductive part and the stigma is a female reproductive part. So what happens? So let me draw the diagram of stigma okay so this is stigma so whenever pollen grains they are falling on the stigma that will be entering into this and we here we have this is ovary part so it is entering into the ovary and the fertilization will be happening after once fertilization has happened so this will form the fruit and the whatever the uh, things are there so that will form the seeds okay so if there is no pollination means there is no transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma then there will be no fertilization so after fertilization only the formation of fruit happens if there is no fertilization there is no fruit formation understood or not yeah i want to ask one interesting question i think many of you might not be knowing this i'm not sure okay that here is flowers some flowers they will be blooming in the daytime some flowers they will be blooming in night time yes or no for example rose flower you can see like in day for example jasmine it is in uh, night time right on yes or no there will be lots and lots of uh, flowers they will be blooming in night so have you ever observed like uh, the flowers which are blooming in the daytime they will be having attractive colors like red violet uh, pink yes or no 
So have you ever observed like whenever the flowers which are blooming in the night time, they do not have colors. So they will bloom only in white color or yellow, only in white or yellow color. Have you ever observed this? Yes or no? Yeah, I will tell you one uh, flower of vegetable that will be consuming like rich god. Rich god. So rich god flowers are yellow in color. They will be blooming in night time, evening time, especially after six. So what is the reason? And the flowers are blooming in the morning time. They will be not having the good smell. If you say jasmine, it is having a very, very good smell. So what is the reason? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever think about that at least? Yes, I will tell you the reason. So flowers which are blooming in daytime, they will be having attractive colors. And flowers which are blooming in night time, normally they are in white or yellow color. And they will be have very, very good fragments. And normally they will be having less fragments or sometimes no fragments. So the ultimate aim of that flower, it is to get fertilized, right? So they will be attracting pollinators. So these flowers, they will be attracting pollinators by their colors. But here during night time, so they will not, they cannot show the color to the pollinators, right? So they will use this fragments to attract pollinators. To attract pollinators, they will use this flower, fragments. Okay, clear? So this is the thing that you have to know. Yeah, and now let us move back. I don't know whether you know this concept or not. So if you like this concept, please hit the like button. And please let me know whether you know this or not. So here this article says that pollinator plant interaction disrupted by nitrate radicals. So because of increasing of pollution, what happening? So the flowers, they can't develop or they can't secrete the good fragments. So because of this less fragments, you are not attracting the pollinators. So this is the issue here. So now let us see this in detail. So air pollutants. So because of this increasing of pollutants in air, so that is reducing nocturnal hawk moth pollination. So actually there is one flower which is blooming in the night time that is called as evening prime rose and the smell of this flower is excellent. And because of that smell, even it can attract the snakes. Okay. So what happened because of increasing of air pollutants. So now these flowers, they are secreting less scents or less fragments. So because of this, it is affecting this pollination by this hawk moth. So this hawk moth is a pollinator. So normally the agents of pollination will be like wind, water and insects, moths, honeybees, okay. And as well as small birds, etc. Okay, so this uh, evening prime rose pollinator here is hawk moth because of less fragments it is secreting because of this air pollutants. Yes, the pollination is affecting. Okay, there is impact on pollination because of anthropology that is human made airborne pollutants that is decreasing this global pollination. Okay, so which are the pollutants that are affecting this pollination? like ozone like nitrate radicals okay they are known to degrade the chemical compounds that produce floral scents they are degrading this components of the flower which secretes the scents or fragments so whenever there is decreasing of fragments it is not attracting much pollinators so that it is affecting the pollination of this plant okay so these are the very important things that you have to know and next topic here you can see study shows magma flows into dike below Grinbach, Grindavik. So here you have to know about volcano. Okay, so this topic is important from your topic called as volcano. So this volcano is the topic that is present in your GS paper 1 in your geography. In your geography you will be studying about this volcano. So volcano is nothing but opening. Okay, 
so there is opening in that surface so from this surface magma from inside the earth which is coming outside okay so this is surface of the earth there is some opening so from this opening whatever the magma which is present that will be coming outside okay that is called as volcano and whenever this hot viscous liquid which is present inside the earth that is called as magma so whenever the same liquid which is coming outside and it is coming outside the earth surface that is called as lava it is very important difference between this lava and magma okay so in this volcano topic you will be studying about different structures like different landforms in this landforms we will be studying about intrusive and extrusive extrusive landforms and intrusive landforms so this article which is talking about dike dike or dike okay so in your exam in your books ncrt it is uh, it is the spelling here is dike so there are, this is a example of intrusive landforms like we have bacolith lapolith facolith sills dike okay so this is one of the intrusive intrusive landform okay Intru intrusive uh, rock structure of this volcano so now let us see this article in detail so this article is says that the 15 kilometers long magma dike that formed beneath this grindavik which is located in iceland in november 2023 it has been reached the subsurface magma flow so from that dike dike is nothing but this is edge surface so it is like this perpendicular okay it is perpendicular to the edge surface and it came outside and from here the flow of this lava is happening and the flow here is 7400 cubic meters per second it is very very high so here the dike formation preceded the more recent Sudhikar eruptions in December 2023 and January 2024 and this study says that because of this uh, study when we are understanding the movement of this magma in these dikes so we can also understand how this major dikes had been formed okay so this is about this study and now let us see some facts regarding these dikes so dikes nothing but when the lava makes its way through cracks and the fissures which are developed in the land it solidifies almost perpendicular to the ground it is ground means yes if in this way perpendicularly they will be forming and will be getting cooled in the same position to develop a wall like structure so these structures are called as dikes and they are most commonly found in intrusive forms in the western maharashtra region in india so if you are talking about in india in maharashtra we can see the large number of dikes are present and they are considered to be the feeders for the eruptions and that lead to the development of deck and traps in Maharashtra. Okay, so this is about this dikes topic. And now let us move back to our newspaper. And there is one more important article that is deep earth hydrogen reservoir drives out gassing that is coming out. So direct measurements from the deep, I will zoom it so that you can have a good look. Can you see it now? Yes or no? Yes, right? Yes. Direct measurement of from the deep with the Bilkis chromium mine in Albania. So that revealed that large quantities of outgassing of natural hydrogen, which is seen here. The presence of faulted reservoir of gas deeply rooted in the surrounding olefite massive. The found the findings shed the light on geological context in which other natural hydrogen sources may be found. At least 200 tons of nearly pure hydrogen gas released from the mine each year. So whenever you are going for mining, mining means you are digging deep into the earth and we are bringing the minerals out. Yes or no? Resources out. So in that process here, uh, uh, hydrogen is also releasing out. So about 200 tons of pure hydrogen gas is releasing out. So here you have to know about composition of our atmosphere. In atmosphere, which of the gases present? So we have a huge percentage of hydrogen okay and we have oxygen is very less percentage around 26 percent to 27 percentage and carbon dioxide is 0 0.3 percentage of carbon dioxide so you have to know about the composition of our atmosphere 
okay we have nitrogen we have hydrogen so what is the percentage of nitrogen what is the percentage of hydrogen what is the percentage of oxygen and what is the percentage of inert gases okay and even what is the percentage of carbon dioxide that you have to see clear so that is the thing that you have to know from this article and here there is one article regarding hpv vaccine that is human papilloma virus vaccine so the brand name of this vaccine is servovac so this uh, vaccine is used to prevent cervical cancer in women so cervical cancer is one of the most cancer that is uh, most prevalent cancer that is seen in women so we have came up with the development of vaccine that is called as hpv vaccine that should be given to the adolescent girls who had not uh, entered into this sexual activity in this faq there is an article regarding uttarakhand's ucc so i discuss this topic in detail and there is one article it is regarding child safety can be ensured in this online or not so actually there are lots and lots of cases of this uh, child abuse or sexual exploitation is seen because of using of this uh, internet so you have to see like what are the issues okay regarding this uh, using of online by the children especially you can see the data and you have to see what are the risk and what can be done so these are the some important articles that are in our today's hindu newspaper i hope you enjoyed this class right so if you want to get the notes of this class you can join the telegram channel okay which is the link is given in the description box this is rathod sai's classes telegram channel do join this so from now onwards uh, once the office which is get started from ashok nagar yes we are going to post lots and lots of updates of current affairs in this channel for sure okay because we will be having the team of 5 to 6 members there so that we'll be constantly updating the videos in youtube and as well as content in this telegram channel so that that will be very useful for you guys and next one is this rathor's ice academy youtube channel is there so please to subscribe that uh, channel so that you will be getting lots and lots of updates soon and next one is this is our website rathor's ice academy website and prelims is very much near i know many of you guys you are facing problem with history or economy or polity or geography okay anything so you can take the courses that we are offering in this rathor's is yes the price is very very minimal that is less than 3000 rupees for the course so you will be getting history okay for uh, more than 140 hours so that is just around 3200 rupees and economy it is 110 hours it will be just 3000 rupees so you can take that course so that you can you can uh, you can uh, go through the topics sure and there will be no doubt because the topics are discussed from the basic level to advanced level there will be no chance of getting doubt and every concepts will be getting clear okay try to join this courses Okay, and if you have any queries, you can call me on this number eight zero seven four seven six double five one three. And from February fifteenth, okay, onwards, we are going to available for giving mentorship for both prelims and mains. Okay, for the students who want to come and meet me directly, who are staying in Hyderabad and nearby this Hyderabad, so they can come and contact me directly in the office. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this class. Please do like the class and share the class to your friends, and do subscribe to Rathor Science Academy. And thank you so much for watching this class, and stay tuned.